Hello, wonderful. This is Sarah, and I'm here with Nate Hogster, and we're going to have a fabulous conversation about men and dating. Nate is a dating coach who helps great guys get great girls without pickup lines or any of that yucky game stuff. How are you, Nate? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, happy Wednesday to you, and thanks for having me on, Sarah. Oh, happy Wednesday, and tomorrow's my happy birthday. Oh my gosh. Well, happy early birthday. Thank you. Yeah, this won't air. This will air after that, but uh, it is happy. It is worth celebrating, right? Just be, are you just getting into the thirties then? Is that? Yes. Yeah. I'm turning 29 this year. Excited about 29. that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. No, not yeah. really, but <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> so you can tell you have a way with words, right? You're very smooth. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I guess maybe. You guess the baby. Well, tell people because it's not just about having great words, right? It's having that great integrity. It's being that great full self as you show up to dating. So, um, give us a little insight on how you do that for guys. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm I'm not. Uh, I don't teach any sort of pickup um, or techniques or your words. I mean, if anything you know, I think that it comes from a place of true authenticity. I think women Mm -hmm. want a man that they can trust and uh, and someone they feel safe with. And in order to feel safe, you have to be able to trust a person. And you can tell when someone's being authentic and when they're not being authentic. So, you know, um, I I help guys get in a a great state, I think, Mm -hmm. you know, before they meet women. Um, a real state that they can be positive and playful from. But for the most part, I don't tell them what to say, because I think when you're really engaged in that part of yourself, that energy, the words can flow. And even if they don't, you know, you can adapt from a natural place and an authentic place. And authenticity is really important um, in terms of creating a, a dynamic that starts in trust. And so that's, that's and, what I'm about. Well, absolutely. And there's, you know, even with matchmakers and stuff and people say, oh, should I hire a dating coach? I'm like, well, be careful because just because they get you matched doesn't mean you stay together or it's a good fit or a healthy relationship. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no, not at all. Um, I'm I'm not against uh, matchmakers, although I just think that it's kind of a hit or miss thing. And more often than not, you know, you've got to you got to meet a few people before you find that one that you really click with. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I my wife and I we watch this show. Uh, she loves it, so I watch it with her. But it's called um, Married at First Sight. I'm not sure if you are familiar. Oh with it, my but gosh! It's, yes, it, I've seen some of those. It's like gives me really so like gives me anxiety though you know considering what we do like you're just like wow it's terrifying yeah yeah yeah, for sure and um you know it's kind of the modern take on like uh matchmaking right and and arranged marriages and it's you know they call it a social experiment but the premise of the show is you know you you meet with these experts they interview you and then they match you up with someone that they think would be a good person for you based on what you've told them. And, and more often not than not, you know, I'd say about 50% of those relationships work out, but you know, oftentimes um, it's just, it's just not a match right from the get go. There's just, there's mm-hmm. not a click there. Um, and even though they're matched on paper, it's just not there. And then there's the whole other aspect of like, you know, these people aren't in a relationship. It's not usually because, they haven't found the right one. It's because they haven't developed how to communicate with the masculine or the feminine. And, and you just see it all the time. It's like they're, they have a great honeymoon. And then as soon as the honeymoon's over, their first argument happens and it's like, boom, they're, they're polar, you know, they're, they're just demagnetized. They just can't speak to one another. So I think, you know, you've got to develop yourself and understand, you know, the opposite. Such an important point because I do. I agree with you. It's like, oh, well, and I don't want to, it is a balance because some people really haven't found the right person and, you know, haven't found a good fit. I, you know, I don't want to put a stereotype on anyone. Uh, Agreed. And I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, all people, particularly because we're discussing the show on that show, right. are not ready because some of them are and some of them work out great, but uh-huh. those ones that don't, you can very clearly see. And I see this with my clients. It's, it's not that you haven't found the right one. It's that you, you know, your dates don't go any further because you don't know how to communicate with the, the opposite sex or you don't understand the feminine energy or as soon as, you know, some miscommunication happens, uh, things go AWOL. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's part of it. 
for sure. So from your perspective, mm -hmm. why do men and women have trouble conversing and communicating in that real um, connected state of a relationship? I think we just don't understand one another. Um, I know I'm married, uh, you know, and I've, I've been with my wife for five years. I've been with my husband five years. Well, awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we're still, we're still learning how to yeah. communicate with one another. We're still like, we still get in arguments that, you know, we've had a hundred times in, in mm -hmm. learning how to, to change those things. So, you know, but I, I think I evolved to a place where I could connect with her enough that we could date. She felt safe. I understood her to a certain point where there was attraction and, and that happened, but even so, you know, there's, there's more levels to it. So I think that you just kind of have to develop into a place where, um, you know, you, you understand that the feminine needs to feel safe. It's not that they are testing you. It's that they want to know your strength. They want to know that you're going to be there for them. They, um, and it's not personal against you. It's, mm -hmm. or, or more often than not, you know, this woman needs a hug and you, you don't see it, or mm -hmm. she's just feeling hurt, but mm -hmm. it's coming across in a way that you think it's um, personal against you. And it's not that way. And so, you know, you have to look a little bit deeper. You have to understand, I think a little bit what's really going on with masculine and with the feminine on the woman's side as well. But um, we just, we don't necessarily understand each other. So with my clients, I work with them to make sure that path is less confusing for guys, Yeah, you know, and I think so many girls kind of have this idea like, well, if you love me, you could read my mind and know what I'm supposed, you know, know I need yeah. a hug. And yeah. because you didn't know I needed a hug, you're not my soulmate and we're not meant to be together. And it creates disasters. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think it's true that men have to step up and step past it being personal. And on my side, I'm saying, and women can't expect men to be mind readers. You know, just mm -hmm. say, I need a hug. I am sad. I need some space today. I need a date. I need to go on dinner. <laughs> I need, right? And yeah. so many women are afraid to say, I need that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think men are too. I think mm -hmm. men are afraid to be themselves because they don't want to let their guard down and they're taught not to show emotion and to be vulnerable. And, you know, we've heard this before, but, you know, men don't want to appear weak. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's banged into our brains our entire lives from mm -hmm. coaches, friends, mentors, uh, you know, media. And um, so it's kind of breaking down some of those barriers to be authentic and, and be open with how we truly feel. And that's, I think, where real connection can really happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but it takes an evolved person to be able to hear a vulnerable man open himself and respond to it in kind and not judge him for it or not think that he's needy or not think that he's weak. So um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's just, there's barriers that we, we put up. Um, oftentimes we don't know what they are, but you know, it's, it's our way of thinking, it's our way of communicating. And there's so many different things that can keep us from connecting. Well, I agree. And I think as you were speaking, sometimes we give men, you know, three or four crayons, you're allowed to have three or four crayons, you're allowed to be angry, you're allowed to be happy, maybe frustrated. And uh, I don't know, I don't even know. Maybe I'll give men three crayons. I mean, I yeah. can't even think of any other emotions men are allowed to have. Uh, but women are allowed to have 162 crayons in the box. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I'm sad. I'm discouraged. I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed. I'm nervous. I'm, you know, I guess maybe men can be overwhelmed. Maybe we give permission to men to be stressed. Um, but if we give men more colors, it increases, is that kind of what you're saying? Increasing communication, allowing them, not that they need women's permission to have more colors, but as women, allowing them to have more emotional colors without thinking they're weak, 
less than, not strong, broken, too feminine. Yeah. Is that what you're kind of what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I heard once, uh, heal the boy and the man will appear. Mm. And, um, you know, if a man is feeling hurt or down or angry or sad or depressed or whatever it is, you know, providing that safe space for him can allow him to get back to his center, mm. get back to mm -hmm. his power and his strength. And he can show up for you in a way that, you know, you're going to be really happy and pleased mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes it's getting through those things before you shut the door. And, and then don't get his, give him that opportunity to, to show up for you. Okay. I love to have that conversation because after people have been hurt, most of my listeners have been very hurt. Then it's this real dance of when to shut the door on a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, because in the past they probably let the door stay open way too long they lost their sense of safety as they should have you know there were really situations that were happening that most of us on the outside go whoa what was happening so but then they tend to either shut the door forever or shut the door too quickly so where are all the good guys i hear girls ask that question all the time where are all the good guys man <laughs> You, you asked me that before and I was like, I was almost surprised. Like, what do you mean? They're all, they're everywhere. Um, every guy that I talk to is a great guy who genuinely wants love in his life. He genuinely wants a companion to connect with. Um, and these are really well-meaning guys. So I think they're, they're out there. Um, but the problem is, is that the good guys fall into the nice guys. They fall into the friend zones because they're trying to be pleasing. They're, mm -hmm. they're trying to not ruffle the feathers. They're afraid to be themselves and show authenticity or disagree with you if they have an opinion about something. Um, and, and so, you know, there are great guys are out there. Um, and you asked me earlier, you know, kind of about the, the bad boys there before we, I think we started recording, yes, but, uh -huh. you know, the bad boys are there and, and the women are dating all the bad boys and they're, they're just mm -hmm. kind of circling amongst the social circles. Um, the bad boys are authentic. The bad boys have their masculine energy down, albeit they do it in sort of a toxic way. Um, but masculine energy can be really strong and it can also have a lot of great integrity if you do it in the right way. And that means showing up uh, being willing to say what you mean, mm -hmm. being true to what you feel, being true to your desires, having direction, having purpose, telling a woman that, you know, you want her not being mm -hmm. afraid to do that. Yeah. And I think a lot of nice guys are afraid to do that. They're afraid to be rejected or they're afraid of how it might go. Um, and they don't realize that, you know, feminine women, they want to be taken, they want to be loved and they want mm -hmm. to be desired. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to get that message out there to those. those well, and I'm, and I'm trying to get the message out too, to, because I think for so many women, they don't want to get rejected. So if the more bad boy type persona or um, overly confident persona takes out all that rejection piece, it's like, no, this is what I want. We're going to be together at the beginning. It feels very safe because she doesn't have to do the work. It does. It feels you know, there's no guessing game. It's just like, oh, he likes me. He wants me. Go. Mm -hmm. And the nice guy, it's like, well, does he like me? Does he not? Does he this? Yeah. Does he that? Yeah. So it can feel safer. The bad boy can actually feel safer at the beginning for ladies. Right. Yeah. But it does not end well. No. No. It Gosh, doesn't. it does not end well. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, you can be taken advantage of. You can be heartbroken. Mm -hmm. um, all mm -hmm. those things. But yeah, you're right. I mean, with the nice guy, it's like you're you're trying to not show what you really feel, and then it comes across as weird or confusing or, or misunderstood, confusing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know. And um, I just always I tell all my clients just just tell them like tell them you want them tell them how you feel you know, tell them you want to kiss them, even if, if it comes to that, you know, um, but, but don't hold back with what you truly feel and, and don't play games because that mm -hmm. is just creating a dynamic that's built on that's inauthentic. And it's not mm -hmm. gonna, it's not gonna go well, as soon as you start being your true self, and you stop being the person you were portraying yourself as mm -hmm. now, who are you?
now there's like this unconscious breach of trust that, that well, I call it bringing in the representative, you know, so it's like, okay, I'm bringing in the representative to dating and, you know, and they're like, oh, I'm this, I'm that, it, you know, and girls will, I'll, they'll talk about that. And I'm like, uh, do you want the guy to bring his representative in? They're like, no. I said, play by the same dang rules. Don't bring in this version of yourself and then expect yeah. the guy to bring his true version. And then you're pulling the rug out from underneath him. Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, I don't. And they're usually really nice women. They're like, oh, I don't want to do that. They're just, there's all these barriers of hurt, especially dating after a divorce, dating older and you know, whatever it mm -hmm. is, we've all mm -hmm. got our scars. Maybe it's a bad parent relationship modeled. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I've found this real pattern of why the, why the bad boys are winning and you know, why the nice guys are losing. Do you recommend dating apps to your guys uh, where, where do you, Absolutely. your clients find ladies? Okay. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, I, I offer, um, part of, part of what I do is I help them with their profiles and with their pictures and, and help, you know, a lot of my guys are divorced or yeah. they're back in the dating market for the first time in 10, 15 years. Um, and, and they've never done used dating apps before. So it's confusing. They're not having mm -hmm. any success. They don't know what the heck's going on. So I help them a lot. Um, and I really recommend dating apps because, you know, 90% of single Americans above the age of 18, single Americans are using or are online, you know, whether mm -hmm. using an app or a dating website, um, it's just where people are. And it, and, you know, it can save you so much time and energy. If you mm -hmm. think about going to a bar, let's just say there's 50 women in there. You don't know which ones are single. You don't know which ones are available. You don't know which ones you have things in common with. Um, you'd have to talk to every single person in that bar to figure out who's available, who's not. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and I mean, of course, there's cues, I think, that you can get in a social setting, like you might make eye contact. But, but it's just, I think that you can find more what you're looking for. And we live in a day, we live in the, the Yelp age where everyone wants to make sure that they're getting what they want in a partner. And sometimes that can be, you know, too much and uh, you know, yeah. they can be too picky, but mm -hmm. I think that that helps you to really find someone that is aligned with what you're looking for. Um, I met my wife online, so I'm a big fan of it. And I've helped a ton of guys find people online. Uh, when they know how to do it correctly, when they know how to market themselves and, and they know, you know, what kind of pictures to put up and they know what to say in their profile, it can be really, really effective. And you can, you can meet a lot of people and, and ultimately find one that you want to be with. So if obviously you work with males, but if I'm a mm -hmm. female and these women are going through dating profile after dating profile, um, yeah. do you feel like nice guys are getting overlooked because the more bad boys are better at dating profiles, better at making, they know how to make themselves attractive. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, th I think, I think bad boys, they have, it's on their radar to, it's, it's a part of, I don't know if it's significance. It's a part of their identity to be good with women. So they've, they make it a point to showcase themselves in a way that's really attractive. Um, mm -hmm. Nice guys, it might not necessarily be on their radar until they feel like they're ready for a family or something like that. And um, so it's just learning to speak that language of what a woman finds attractive in a guy. And, you know, ultimately, I think that from an evolution standpoint, it comes down to, you know, are you a good partner? Do you have good genes? And, you know, would you make a good dad? Because that's, mm -hmm. that's what we've evolved to women have evolved to look for in a guy. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a very big risk for them to not find that because, you know, putting their offspring in the wrong guy could ultimately mean <laughs> that their children are going to die or they could die. Yeah, so, yeah. but a, but a bad boy, you know, can, he might be in really great shape. You know, he can showcase that he's got good genes. He can fake that he's a good partner um, mm -hmm. or, or he would make a good, dad for for a period of time and and that's mm -hmm. attractive to a woman and, and nice guys they just don't understand that so I think it's just mm -hmm. learning to communicate those factors so what can women look for and it's a sign because you know it was very 
it would be very helpful to have someone who's good at picking up women for about 10 minutes of the relationship. But for the next 10 years of the relationship, having a guy who's good at picking up women is a bad quality that's only useful in that first, you know, 10 minutes. Um, but it's the first 10 minutes you has to happen. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be ill-informed to say that any guy that picks is good at picking up women is just about women mm -hmm. dating multiple women. I don't think that's the case always, but I do think, yes, if you can, if you can talk to a woman and create an initial spark, you put your foot in the door and, mm -hmm. and you open the possibility for something more to happen. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, a lot of times that is first impressions, you know, and, and mm -hmm. helping those nice guys with the first impression, showing up, yeah. confident, speaking what you want. Don't be afraid to talk to a woman who the hell cares, you know, um, it, what's the worst that could happen? You, she says no, and you're in the same spot. So it's, it's like, everyone understands that, but like, can you doing it tough? Yeah. Can you get to that place where it, it doesn't affect you? And, and that's the work, you know, that's the work you got to do. So if I'm a girl in dating and there's these nice guys that are getting overlooked. Can you give me kind of a profile of them? Or I'm like, Ooh, I should, I, I've been looking at this person, but I should be looking at this person. Uh, what does that person look like? That good guy. Hmm. I, I think, let me think about that. Is there a profile you should look for? I think that, I think you should be true to what you really want. And if, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to just be aware of the red flags. Mm -hmm. And part of what I do with guys is getting really clear on what they're looking for. And I think a lot of women are clear, but a lot of guys aren't. They've never written it down on a piece of paper. They don't know what their musts are, must nots are. Yeah. So for a woman, you know, you if you have the clarity going in, talk to the guys you're attracted to, talk to the guys that sound like what you want, but then just be really aware of the red flags so that you don't, you know, get sucked into something that's ultimately going to end really badly. Um well well, and if you're yeah. dating, like I hear a lot of women and they're afraid, like, I don't want to put that I'm marriage minded on a dating app because that might push away guys. Is that pushing away nice guys who are also looking for the same thing? Or does that feel like too much pressure? No, I don't think so. I, okay. I think, I think being honest with what you're looking for is the way to go. Don't, don't try and come in under the radar and then surprise them. Oh yeah. I'm looking for marriage. <laughs> the whole time they thought that you were looking for, you know, a casual partner. Yeah. So I, I yeah. think that you can create that filter and the guys that are looking for marriage are, you know, are going to see that and they're going to connect yeah. with you and you're going to attract those to you like attracts like in my experience. So mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. very clear on what it is that you're looking for and don't apologize for that. Um, mm -hmm. And just be patient until you find the, the right one. And do you have to work with your clients on resiliency? I mean, dating can be disappointing. Um, you know, what are it. some, yeah. So yeah. What are some resiliency strategies or tips? Understanding you your emotions. I think, I, I don't mm -hmm. think that it's like a tip. I think it's really understanding that this, this might be challenging. I don't, I don't want to say it's going to be challenging because some people, you know, find, find their person really quickly, but mm -hmm. for other people, it takes years. And for those people that it might take years for them to find, you better, you better be able to process the rejection and not get to the point where you're going to get resentful or jaded, yeah. you know, and shut yourself down and take yourself out of the market. Because as soon as you do that, then, you know, then, then you don't have any more opportunities. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's just learning to understand your emotions. And, you know, if, if a, a, you're dating a girl and you know, you're see her for two or three weeks and you're really excited about it. And then out of nowhere, she breaks up with you or, or vice versa on the woman's side, you know, how do you handle that? Do yeah. you take yourself out and, and stop meeting people for six months? Or mm -hmm. are you able to process that and say, you know, I'm really disappointed. I'm really hurt. Um, 
but I'm not going to let it make me feel like, you know, I'm a failure or I'm mm -hmm. not good enough or any of those things. So it's teaching guys how to process their emotions. I have an entire, you know, part of, of what I do is, is teaching guys how to process their emotions and, and really being in touch with those. Cause no one's ever taught guys how to do that. And no, no. It's really, I, really important. Yeah. I, no one's really taught women. There's just, it's like, okay, I don't remember, I don't remember the first time I changed a diaper, mm -hmm. but it was, I was just around people changing diapers. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, did I get taught how to process emotions? I don't know, but I was just around people having that conversation, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I was reading one of John Gottman's books and I'll, I'll try and remember this example as best I can, but they, they did a study on boys and girls on the playground. And um, you've heard this one. Uh huh. Yeah. But they, yeah, they may not like, have, but yes. Yeah. And it was like how um, boys and girls respond to, they, they both start playing a game. Let's just say it's a game of tag or something or, mm -hmm. or kickball or whatever. And, you know, when something goes wrong, um, with a, with a woman, the girls all come to them, to the girl, what's wrong? Are you okay? Let's talk about it. You know, tell me how you're feeling. And then the uh -huh. game never starts again, right? For the girls uh -huh. on the playground, but for the boys, um, they just want to make sure, Hey dude, you okay? You know, yeah. uh, is everything good? Okay, cool. We can get to back to playing again. And then they just mm -hmm. kind of like brush it off. Right. And so mm -hmm. I think that's a dynamic that, um, has kind of been shown in studies that, that guys, they just, they want to push things aside. They just want to get it over with and move on to the next thing. And that's the hunter in us. That's the, and, and that's a difference between hunting hunters and gatherers. But um, so yeah, guys, they're just not naturally programmed to look at their emotions, process their emotions. They just want to get over it, get on to the mm -hmm. next thing. But mm -hmm. the problem with that is that that can create a lot of scarring. It can create a lot of unconscious you know, pain there and, um, it can, it can be well, problematic. I, I think you brought up a really good point too, mm -hmm. because they said, let's get over it and move on. But they also checked on the boy who was, you know, who had fallen. Hey dude, yeah. you cool. You, yeah. you okay. Yeah. And if somebody's listening, it's like, my toxic guy told me to get over everything. Well, did he make sure you were okay first, you know, and maybe yeah. for a guy, it doesn't turn into this three day cry fest. Right. Yeah. But there was some sense of care that, that it just looks different between the sexes. Mm -hmm. Right. But there is a sense of care. Are you okay? Yeah. You cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. You know? Um, yeah. I think that's a really important thing to know. So good guys everywhere on dating apps do you have any advice or do you ever talk to your people on so the first date i hear a lot of conversations like and it turns into this like and this is all the bad stuff that happened to me and this is all the bad stuff that happened to me and i'm like oh whoa this should not be a therapy session uh have you seen any of that and what's your advice on that yeah i think that's just a certain type of person to be honest with you in my in my opinion i think that you know, people who want to talk about, this is what happened to me. Here's how bad it is. I think that's just a way of unconsciously getting a sense of significance. You know, mm -hmm. here's all my mm -hmm. problems. And, um, you know, that's a toxic way to connect in my opinion. So it's probably not a good person to, to pair up with. Um, mm -hmm. and that person probably needs to do some work on themselves and find another way to, to seem unique, <laughs> you know, as opposed to having the biggest problem. So it, it happens. I mean, it, it doesn't have to even be in dating. It happens in everyday life. I know people mm -hmm. who always have the biggest problem, you know, in, in family, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. their go-to is, you know, look how much pain I'm in, look how much drama I'm going through. So mm -hmm. it's just a, it's just a way of getting significance in my opinion. And, and um, you know, this is just not a good person to connect with. But it's not sexy significance, right? So I want no. everyone to hear what he just said, right? Because I think from a whim, from a female perspective, after going through healing, sometimes what they are they are saying is like, well, but then I need to be authentic, and it's like, whoa, 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 you can be authentic without it being emotional vomiting about mm. 
everything because I agree about your point of significance. And I also think it's this barrier of like, let me tell you all my really, really bad stuff. And let me see if you're going to love me anyway. And so it's like this dumping. And then it's this like alternate connection. Like they're super connected just because they, they know these bad things about you, which just creates a really unhealthy dynamic right from the start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, why would you want to get pop? You're, you're testing a person on whether they like you because of all the crap that you have in your life. And that's what you want to showcase. I don't know that I would lead with that. (laughs) You know, if if anything, (laughs) if anything, you know, if you're going to talk about the crap that you've been through, you know, talk about what it's done for you and what you've learned from it. I mean, to me, that's attractive and uh, it's a good sign of emotional health. It's a good sign of how you deal with certain situations. So if you're going to talk about crap, don't just leave it as, you know, here's all the crap. Here's what I got from it. Here's what I learned from it. I love that. Flip it into growth. Yeah. Yeah. As quickly as possible. Oh, I agree completely. And I'm glad I know we did not say we we're going to talk about that, but I'm, I'm glad we did because it's, I think it's a real problem and yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. I'm not sure if guys complain about it, but I know girls are saying, I need to like tell them all this stuff right from the start. And it creates a really odd first date, right? Mm. <laughs> An odd yeah. first date. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it happens. I don't hear, but I don't hear that too often. I'm sure it does happen though. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, see, maybe they're telling all the bad guys this stuff and you've got these nice guys and, you know, my ladies are missing them and dumping their troubles to the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> or, so and maybe. Hero. And maybe they're dumping it all on this quote unquote bad guy who's actually a good guy, but you know, they gave such a bad first impression that they didn't want to continue to see him. Yeah. Because I agree. If you are an emotionally healthy person, it's like, whoa, is this person getting their significance from their pain? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, healthy men are not wanting to enter into that Yeah. for understandable reasons. Right. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Nate, great conversation. Anything else that you kind of your last words of wisdom? Um, it's like, oh, I wish humankind knew this, or I wish everyone dating knew this. Uh, what, are, what are your last words of wisdom for us? I actually just, I, I got a little emotional when you said that, because the thing that came up for me, it was like, love is the oxygen of the soul. And, you know, man, times are so weird right now with, you know, women's empowerment and men are, you know, getting resentful. And, you know, there's this whole movement of this, it's called the red pill and uh, men going their own way. And they've basically renounced women and, you know, and um, there's the me too stuff and all this crap. That's just kind of like making it harder and harder to connect with the opposite sex. But you know, I think that we need love to survive. We need good, healthy relationships. And there's people out there that, you know, really want it and still believe in it. And um, just don't give up. Don't give up hope. Keep keep the love alive because it's it's real. It's it's possible to find. And the love story is is there for both guys and, and girls. Oh, I love that. You can see like the, the smile that came over my face. And you're like, the love story is still available. And yeah. I'm seems like you found yours. I've certainly found mine. Uh, and it's, it's fun to have these conversations because then you're kind of reminded like, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful for you. Oh my gosh, I'm so thankful for you yeah. in those healthy relationships, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, I'll be carrying the torch as long as I can. Mm, that's Definitely. awesome, Nate. Tell people where they can find more about you. Yeah, my website's called uh, ditchthegame.com, D-I-T-C-H the game.com. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram at ditch the game. So those are good places to start. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for helping us on our journey to becoming toxic person proof. Thank you.